So in this tutorial for Resolve Fusion, I'm going to show you how to make this paper cutout effect. Just some simple 3D construction and a bit of lighting, pretty easy to do. Let's take a look. So here I am in Resolve. I'm going to right click to make a new Fusion composition. I'm going to make it nine seconds long. I'm going to call it cut out 24 frames a second suits me just fine. I'm going to hit create. I'm going to double click to open it up. So the first thing I want to do is add a text tool. So let's do that. Just nice 2D text. I'm going to type the word paper. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to select Open Sans Condensed for this. Let's have a size of 0.25. And I'm just going to track it out a bit, 1.025. And the other thing I want to do is I want to come over to Image and I want to turn off Auto Resolution. And I want to set the width and height to 4096. So we've got lots of nice resolution there. So then what I want to do is I want to mask off the alternate letters. And I'm going to do that using a matte control as follows. So matte control there, text into matte control. So matte control, what we're going to do is going to make a rectangular mask, not connected to the matte control for now, here. And then I'm going to add it to the matte control garbage mat. So not the effect mask input. So we can't see anything because our rectangular mask is too wide. So let's just shrink it down until we start seeing something. We need to be able to see our on-screen controls. That's command K, but uh, I'm sure you know how to turn those on. And then I'm just going to move this over and shrink it down. So we're just masking off the A or masking the A out as it were. Then I'm going to do command C, command V with the rectangle selected and I move my mask over till where hiding the E. So that's one version of this. I'm going to copy and paste the Mac control and take the text into the new Mac control. I'm going to take the output of my second rectangle there and again add it to the garbage mat of the new Mac control. Let's take a look at that. Let's open up the garbage mat here and invert. So now we've got this on the one hand and that on the other. So let's now make a 3D shape. So it's going to be a nice plane and let's take the output of one Mac control into that and then copy that plane, paste, take the output of the other one into there like that. And then let's merge the two together. Why not? Like so. And while we're here, let's just command select both of those, open them both up so we can see both of their transforms like this. I want to link the X rotation of one to the X rotation of the other. So I'm going to add an expression here. I'm going to drag to the other X rotation like that. And then just before this expression here, I'm going to add a negative sign. So if I come back here and enter 20 degrees for that rotation, you can see we've got rotation in the opposite direction. Well, whatever I do with that, it mirrors it. Now let's carry on and set up a bit more of our scene. Let's take our shape and paste it. I'm going to call this one cutout. And let's rename these two letters. So letters A and letters B. So then what I'm going to do is I need a fill for my cutout shape. So I'm going to create a background and I'm going to add a merge to it. And then I'm going to take my text and add it to the foreground of the merge. And let's take a look at that. So come back to our background, come back to image, turn off auto resolution, set the width and height to 4096. Uh, let's set the color to white. And what we want to do is come back to the merge. And here, just below apply mode, we've got operator and we want to choose stencil. And then what that does obviously is it gives us a cutout in the middle of our white frame like that. And we can use that as the input to our cutout there. And we can add that to the merge 3D. Now our cutout has inherited a rotation. So let's just remove that like so. And let's take a look at that. You can probably see now that we've got the mechanics of our effect like that. But now we need to think about lighting and so on. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is add a 3D camera just to get that out of the way. Come to the transform, open up the pivot, add an expression to the Z, pick whip the Z translation and add a negative sign here. That's going to make life a lot easier when we animate. Set that 
Z position to 1, and let's set that Y rotation to 20. Then let's add a 3D renderer to the merge and take a look at that. Looks like this. Now we've got our camera in place. We wanted to turn on lighting and shadows, but of course we haven't yet got a light. So that's the next thing we need to do. So to the 3D merge, we're going to add a spotlight here. We need to adjust its position. So come to the transform. I'm going to set the Y translation to 75 and the Z to 1 and the X rotation to negative 45. And now you can see we've actually got some nice shadow action going on there, some lighting that really brings the whole thing together. Just want to dip into this spotlight here. Uh, one thing I want to do here is just open up the penumbra angle so we've got a bit of a softer fall off at the edges there. I do like a little bit of that shading in there, so I'm going to keep it at around seven there. Open up the shadows and I'm going to switch the softness to constant. Makes for slightly prettier shadows but I'm going to reduce that constant softness down to 0 0.01. Obviously there's loads you can do with the shadows, but I'm just going to keep things fairly simple here and just go with this particular setup. Now at the moment we're seeing through to black and I don't actually want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another shape. So I'm going to copy that cutout and paste and call it BG for background. And then I'm going to take my white background and just add it in there like so. And then let's come to the transform and I want to move this back negative 0.5 on Z. And then let's just add it to the merge there. And you can see now we've got a background in there. So we're not seeing through to black or transparent. And I think I'm just going to scale this up to something like four. So that if we're rotating around, we are still seeing plenty of background in there. So I'm not entirely happy about what we're doing with the materials for all of this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a blin just here after this mat control here. And I'm going to come into the specular and reduce that intensity down to nothing because I don't want any specularity. I don't think paper has got too much specularity. And then I'm going to take that blin, command C, come to that next mat control, which is providing our next texture. Shift Command V to make an instance of that. Come down to here, that merge that is piped into the cutout. Shift Command V. I'm not too much worried about the background, but let's Shift Command V here in open space. Let's pipe that into there and this into here, just so our background is getting that same treatment there as well. And then I might come back to this blin and just reduce the brightness of the color. So go down to 90% for that. And I think that's going to be a little bit nicer. Now, interestingly, this works differently in standalone fusion. I'm not entirely sure why. This is the, only the second time I've run this in, in actual Resolve. And in fusion, you, you get a problem where the uh, specularity is actually affecting the look of the whole scene. So here's what that exact same setup looks like in Fusion, and you can see the issue that we have. And that's because the specularity is affecting the transparency. So what we actually need to do is take each material input and add it to the specular intensity of the relevant blin. So do that here, do that here. Uh, we don't necessarily need to do with all of them, but let's just do that, do that here. And with this one, well, it's got no transparency, so it doesn't matter. But you can see that resolves that issue here. An issue that we don't have in Resolve for whatever reason. I'm sure you can explain that to me. OK, let's just do a bit of animation. Let's come to letters B, which I think is providing the source. No, it's not. It's letters. This, is a, this one here, letters A, isn't it? Which has lost its name. So on the first frame, letters A, let's set that. X rotation to zero, keyframe it. Let's come forward, I don't know, 60 frames maybe, set it to 20, come to, I don't know, something like 140, set that to negative 20, come to 210 and set it to positive 20 again. And then probably what we want to do is open up the spline editor, uh, show only selected tool, and then select all of these points and shift S to smooth them, hide that. And the only other thing I want to do is animate my camera. So at the first frame, I'm going to keyframe that Y rotation. I'm going to come to the last frame 
and set that to negative 20. So positive 20 to negative 20. Now this is not going to play back, but I can sort of scrub through and you can see the sort of thing that's happening. You can see that our shadows are not absolutely correct and you'd have to do a lot of uh, render intensive stuff if you wanted those to be completely correct. But you might find that actually on the run this is perfectly fine. So I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.